Hello everyone, I'm Josh from Tack Raven Solutions. In this informational lesson, we will be discussing the top 10 most infamous hackers. Please like and subscribe as it will help our channel's growth. You can do this by clicking on the subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner. Thank you so much again. Let's dive in. When we hear the word hacker, what comes to mind is groups like Anonymous. I found 10 hackers that are infamous for their hacking skills throughout the world. First, let us define what a hacker is. Computer hacking is the act of identifying and exploiting systems and network vulnerabilities to obtain unauthorized access to those systems. Not all hacking is malicious. White hat hackers may work in cybersecurity or as often as software engineers and testers that seek out vulnerabilities to fix them. Black hat hackers operate with malicious intent. That said, there is a large gray area populated by political activists and hackers who wear both hats. Our first hacker on the list is Kevin Mitnick. He's a seminal figure in American hacking. Kevin Mitnick got his career start as a teen. In 1981, he was charged with stealing computer manuals from Pacific Bell. In 1982, he hacked the North American Defense Command, which is also called NORAD an achievement that inspired the 1983 film War Games. In 1989, he hacked Digital Equipment Corporations, also known as DEC or DEC, their network and made copies of their software. Because DEC was a leading computer manufacturer at the time, this act put Mitnick on the map. He was later arrested and convicted and sent to prison. During his conditional release, he hacked Pacific Bell's voicemail systems. Throughout his career in hacking, Mitnick never exploited the access and data he obtained. It's widely believed that he once obtained full control of Pacific Bell's network simply to prove it could be done. A warrant was issued for his arrest for the Pacific Bell incident, but Mitnick fled and lived in hiding for more than two years. When caught, he served time in prison for multiple counts of wire fraud and computer fraud. Although Mitnick ultimately went white hat, he may be part of the both hats or gray area. According to Wired in 2014, he launched Mitnick's Absolute Zero Day Exploit Exchange, which sells unpatched critical software exploits to the highest bidder. Now let's move on to the second group, Anonymous. Anonymous got its start in 2003 on 4chan message boards in an unnamed forum. The group exhibits little organization and is loosely focused on the concept of social justice. For example, in 2008, the group took issue with the Church of Scientology and began disabling their websites, thus negatively impacting their search rankings in Google and overwhelming its fax machines with all black images. In March 2008, a group of Anons marched past Scientology centers around the world wearing the now infamous Guy Fox mask. As noted by The New Yorker, while the FBI and other law enforcement agencies have tracked down some of the group's more prolific members, they lack any real hierarchy and it makes it difficult to possibly identify or eliminate Anonymous as a whole. The third hacker is Adrian Lameau. In 2001, 20-year-old Adrian Lameau used an unprecedented content management tool at Yahoo to modify a router's article and add a, add a fake quote to former Attorney General Ascroft. Lameau often hacked systems and then notified both the press and his victims. In some cases, he helped clean up the mess to improve their security. As Wired points out, however, Lameau took things too far in 2002 when he hacked the New York Times intranet, added himself to the list of expert sources, and began conducting research on high-profile public figures. Lamo earned the moniker, the homeless hacker, because he preferred to wander the streets with little more than a backpack and often had no fixed address. Next up is Albert Gonzalez. According to the New York Daily News, Gonzalez is dubbed the soup Nazi and got his start as a troubled pack leader of computer nerds at his Miami high school. He eventually became active on criminal commerce site shadowcrew.com and was considered one of its best hackers and moderators. 
At 22, Gonzalez was arrested in New York for debit card fraud related to stealing data from millions of card accounts. To avoid jail time, he blamed an informant for the Secret Service, ultimately helping indict dozens of Shadow Crew members. During his time as a paid informant, Gonzalez continued his criminal activities along with a group of accomplices. And Gonzalez stole more than 180 million payment cards account from companies including Office Max, Dave & Buster's, and the Boston Market. The New York Times Magazine notes that Gonzalez's 2005 attack on U.S. retailer TJX was the first serial data breach of credit information. Using a basic SQL injection, this famous hacker and his team created backdoors in several corporate networks, stealing an estimated $256 million from TJX alone. During his sentencing in 2015, the federal prosecutor called Gonzalez human victimization unparalleled. Next up is Matthew Bevan and Richard Price. Matthew Bevan and Richard Price are a team of British hackers who hacked into multiple military networks in 1996, including Griffiths Air Force Base, the Defense Information Systems Agency, and the Korean Atomic Research Institute, also known as CARI. Bevan and Price have been accused of nearly starting a third world war because they dumped CARI research onto American military systems. Bevan claimed that he was looking to prove a UFO conspiracy theory, and according to the BBC, his case bears the resemblance of that of Gary McKinnon. Malicious intent or not, Bevan and Price demonstrated that even military networks are vulnerable. Next up is Jeanson, James, and Chetta. And Chetta had no interest in hacking systems for credit card data or crashing networks to deliver social justice. Instead, Enchetta was curious about the use of bots, software-based robots that can infect and ultimately control computer systems. Using a series of large-scale botnets, he was able to compromise more than 400,000 computers in 2005. According to Ars Technica, he then rented these machines out to advertising companies and was also paid to directly install bots or adware on systems. And Chetta was sentenced to 57 months in prison. This was the first time a hacker was sent to jail for using botnet technology. Michael Kals. In February 2000, 15 year old Michael Kals, also known as Mafia Boy, discovered how to take over networks of the university computers. He used their combined resources to disrupt the number one search engine at the time, Yahoo. Within one week, he also brought down Dell, eBay, CNN, and Amazon using DDoS attacks, also known as distributed denial of service attacks, that overwhelmed corporate servers and caused their websites to crash. Kals's wake-up call was perhaps the most jarring for cybercrime investors and internet proponents. If the biggest websites in the world valued over $1 billion could be so easily sidelined, was any online data truly safe? It's not, a, it's not exaggerated to say that the development of cybercrime legislation suddenly became a top government priority thanks to Kels' hack. Kevin Paulson. In 1983, a 17-year-old Paulson using the alias Dark Dante hacked into ARPANET, the Pentagon's computer network. Although he was quickly caught, the government decided not to prosecute Paulson, who was a minor at the time. Instead, he was let off with a warning. Paulson didn't heed this warning and continued hacking. In 1988, Paulson hacked a federal computer and dug into files pertaining to the deposed president of the Philippines, Ferdinand Marcos. When discovered by the authorities, Paulson went underground. While he was on the run, Paulson kept busy hacking government files and revealing secrets. According to his own website, in 1990, he hacked a radio station contest and ensured that he was the 102nd caller, winning a brand new Porsche, a vacation, a vacation and $20,000. Polson was soon arrested and barred from using a computer for three years. He has since converted to white hat hacking for journalism, writing about cybersecurity and web-related socio-political causes for Wired, the Daily Beast, and his own blog threat level. 
Paulson also teamed up with other leading hackers to work on various projects dedicated to social justice and freedom of information. Perhaps most notably, working with Adam Swartz and Jim Dolan to develop the Open Source Software Secure Drop, initially known as DeadDrop. Eventually, Paulson turned over the platform which enabled secure communication between journalists and sources to the Freedom of the Press Foundation. Jonathan James. Using the alias Comrade, Jonathan James hacked several com companies. According to the New York Times, what really earned James' attention was his hack into the computers of the United States Department of Defense. Even more impressive was the fact that James was only 15 at the time. In an interview with PC Magazine, James admitted that he was partly inspired by the book The Cuckoo's Egg, which details the hunt for a computer hacker in the 1980s. His hacking allowed him to access over 3,000 messages from government employees, usernames, passwords, and other sensitive data. James was arrested in 2000 and was sentenced to six months house arrest and banned from recreational computer use. However, a probation violation caused him to serve six months in jail. Jonathan James became the youngest person to be convicted of violating cybercrime laws. In 2007, TJX, a department store, was hacked and many customers private information were compromised. Despite a lack of evidence, authorities suspect that James may have been involved. In 2008, James committed suicide by gunshot. According to the Daily Mail, his suicide note stated, I have no faith in the justice system. Perhaps my actions today in this letter will send a strong message to the public. Either way, I have lost control over this situation, and this is my only way to regain control. Last up is Astra. This hacker differs from the others on this list in that he has never been publicly identified. However, according to the Daily Mail, some information has been released about Astra, namely that he was apprehended by authorities in 2008, and at that time he was identified as a 58-year-old Greek mathematician. Reportedly, he had been hacking into the Dassault group for almost half a decade. During that time, he stole cutting-edge weapon technology, software, and data, which he then sold to 250 individuals around the world. His hacking cost the Dassault Group $360 million in damage. No one knows why his complete identity has never been revealed, but the word Astra is a Sanskrit word for weapon. And that will conclude our episode. Please like and subscribe by clicking the button below if you haven't already. I'm Josh with Tech Raven Solutions, and I will see you in the next one.